Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about cellular respiration, which in simple terms is the use of glucose to derive energy for the cell to use. So here we go. Respiration is in three main parts. The first part is glycolysis, the second is the citric acid or Krebs cycle, and the third final part is the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. The first part is called glycolysis, which when you break it down literally means the splitting of glucose. It's an anaerobic process, so it works in the absence of oxygen. We begin with a six carbon chain called glucose, two ATP molecules which each have three phosphates deposit one phosphate on either side of the six carbon chain, which forms an unstable molecule. So it splits into two, leaving it as two molecules, each with three carbons and a phosphate on either side. A key point to note is that the two ATP that were used in this process leave the cycle as two ADP, meaning they only have two phosphates now. The two molecules continue down parallel paths. The NAD plus molecule that I'm drawing right now is an electron carrier, which will come back later in the electron transport chain, but for now it's just being reduced by some electrons from the molecule that has three carbons. It is also bonding with a hydrogen proton or a positively charged hydrogen atom, which will come back later in the transport chain. And the NAD plus leaves the system as NADH because it's bonded to hydrogen, and it also takes hydrogen protons with it for use later. Now to get rid of those pesky phosphates, the ADP molecules come back and they take away the phosphates, leaving them as ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and this leaves us with two three-carbon molecules with, known as pyruvate. Since there were two phosphates on each of the carbon chains, we need two ADP molecules per carbon chain to get rid of all the phosphates. And the final results of glycolysis are four ATP molecules, but since we used two to give the phosphates to the six carbon chain originally, there is a net production of two ATP molecules. Two molecules of pyruvate are produced for the citric acid cycle, and also, two molecules of NADH and two hydrogen protons are produced, which will be used in the electron transport chain. The pyruvate molecules now leave the cytoplasm and enter the inner matrix of the mitochondria. Here it bonds with coenzyme A, which brings it over to the beginning of the cycle. From here it enters a complex cycle where it takes many different forms and gives off several different molecules as byproducts. However, we're just going to focus on the key points. It gives off carbon dioxide, NADH, another NADH, ATP, FADH2, and water. Now an important note, the oxaloacetate returns to the beginning of the cycle to bond with the next molecule of pyruvate and coenzyme A at the next cycle. <laughs> Sorry, my friend called me in the middle of making this video when it took forever. Back to respiration. Okay, the products of the citric acid cycle are ATP, which is produced in the same manner as in glycolysis, which is adding phosphate to ADP. Carbon dioxide, which is then exhaled. And three molecules of NADH and one molecule of FADH2. Both are electron carriers that will come in handy during the electron transport chain coming up next. Now, being the good bio students that you are, you're probably wondering, don't NADH and FADH2 need to bring protons to the electron transport chain? Why, yes, yes they do. They do that by bonding with hydrogen protons from glucose, C6H12O6. That H12 is hydrogen protons, hydrogen atoms, which then go into hydrogen ions. They bond and form NADH, which can then be broken down again into NAD plus and hydrogen. The electron transport chain is divided into two sections. The first of which is called the proton gradient section, which is exactly what it sounds like, developing a gradient of protons across a membrane in the inner mitochondrial matrix. And the second part is chemiosmosis. First, we gotta draw in our membrane of the inner mitochondrial matrix. These are all membrane proteins, and here are some electron carrying proteins in between. Where I'm writing is the inner mitochondrial matrix, and on the outside is the outer mitochondrial matrix, and on the outside of that would be the cytoplasm. 
So first, we've got to develop a hydrogen proton gradient between the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes. So to do this, we have NADH, which is carrying two electrons and a hydrogen proton. It sends one hydrogen proton into the protein complex, and the electrons, as they travel down the transport chain, send the protons out into the inner mitochondrial space between the inner and outer membranes. This is building up a gradient, a very steep gradient, of hydrogen protons on the outside of the membrane. Now an important part is these. there are some hydrogen protons in excess in the inside of the membrane. These form water molecules, which are given off as a byproduct. Now here, this brings us to chemiosmosis. The gradient of hydrogen protons by the simple laws of diffusion will automatically want the hydrogen protons to travel where they are less abundant. So they travel through ATP synthase, which powers it to combine ADP and a phosphate, synthesizing a molecule of ATP. This is probably the most important part, and I'm really sorry that it gets really, really bright here. But I'm going to circle it in a minute because it's so important. This is where the majority of ATP that is used as chemical energy for your cells every single day is synthesized, and the grand total is 36 molecules of ATP. Alrighty, that's all for today, folks. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos or if you have any comments or questions, just leave them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day and good luck on your test. Bye!